On the origin of life, we win. Christianity comes out on top. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Well, maybe it is stupid, but it's also dumb. Hello, everyone. I'm Professor Plank. I respond to various theological and ideological questions and claims from a rationalistic and naturalistic approach in an effort to give and explain the opposite viewpoint and help to balance the conversation. Today we're getting back to Matt Powell and his flaccid, fallacy-laden, and downright lie-filled rant against atheism and all the horrors that come from being an atheist. You know, terrible things like being honest with yourself, proportioning confidence in one's position to the evidence, or actually caring about whether or not your beliefs are an accurate reflection of reality and not just fanciful, wishful thinking. You know, awful stuff like that. But this time around, Matt is actually going to back off the ad hominems and focus more on the issues where theists, specifically creationist Christians, disagree with the common atheistic positions that are, you know, backed up by science, reason, and logic. So bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for them. So let's get into these issues and hear Matt attempt to defend the indefensible. But before we get to that, if you end up liking what you see in this video and would like to help out the channel, make sure to subscribe and click the bell so you'll always be notified when new content comes out. Check out my social media, including my Patreon and Twitter, all linked below in the description. And of course, like this particular video, maybe pop in a comment. All that goes a long way towards pleasing the YouTube algorithm, that benevolent basin of beauty and brilliance bestowing its beneficence on believers and blasphemers both may it keep my channel motoring along. Now on to today's video. On the origin of life, we win. Christianity comes out on top. But they will mock the virgin birth, say, oh, how could a virgin conceive? Atheists believe that rocks conceived life. You can look it up. You can type in online. Just type in these words. You owe your life to rock. Brings up a paper that explains why secular humanism is a valid explanation and we descended from minerals that were eroded from rocks. There is a little nugget of correctness in a lot of utterly false bullshit in that. The only thing Matt got right there was that there is an article online called You Owe Your Life to Rock. But that's literally the only thing he got right here. For starters, this isn't a paper, it's in fact a fairly short article. Which makes it all the worse about how wrong he gets it, because it's literally only seven paragraphs long. I mean, if this were a 50-page scientific paper covering tons of data, a literature review, explanation of methodology, exploration of findings, etc., one could forgive Matt for not having the time, or patience, or basic reading comprehension to pour over all of it. But something that takes five minutes to read, especially when you're going to cite it by name for your anti-atheism video. Okay, so let's actually run through everything he got wrong about this article. For one, the article does not say that rocks conceived life or that we descended from minerals eroded from rocks. Instead, the article talks about how proteins that were necessary for single-celled life forms to become multicellular life forms were freed up into the environment by erosion. From the article, quote, For much of its history, life on Earth existed as only single-celled organisms. Certain proteins critical for multicellular life and presumed to have been equally critical for its evolution from single-celled ancestors required heavy metal elements, especially copper, zinc, and molybdenum, says John Parnell, a geoscientist at the University of Aberdeen in the United Kingdom. Previous studies suggest that multicellular life evolved sometime between 1.6 billion and 1.2 billion years ago. Researchers thought that before that innovation, these vital metals were locked away from environments where life thrived, either sequestered in the oxygen-poor depths of the ocean or held in ancient ore deposits in Earth's crust, waiting to be eroded. So, it doesn't claim that a rock magically turned into some kind of a life form or organism. But instead, it says that the building blocks necessary for life to thrive became available for life to consume. 
Saying this article claims that life came from rocks is like trying to claim that your doctor says that you came from the laundry room because your mother had a good amount of iron in her diet. Furthermore, the article never once says anything about secular humanism. And this is especially funny given that Matt literally air-quoted such a statement. Brings up a paper that explains why secular humanism is a valid explanation. Not only is secular humanism not discussed at all in this article, but neither does the phrase valid explanation ever come up. And that's exactly what he air quoted. Literally, the entire article is just about how life needs a variety of vitamins and minerals to thrive, and a lot of those minerals used to be locked up in rocks, and it's a good thing that they got freed up because we needed them. That's it. This is not an abiogenesis article. Some will mock the idea that God created man from the dust of the ground, yet they believe that lightning sparked life into existence, just like Frankenstein, just like science fiction, that lightning could create life, something that destroys life. Sparked life into existence? Are you kidding me? Well, this sounds like classic argument from incredulity which is concluding that because you can't or refuse to believe something, it must not be true, improbable, or the argument must be flawed. This is a specific form of the argument from ignorance. And ignorance is Matt Powell's bread and butter. Oh, lightning sparked life into existence, are you kidding me? Matt, are you kidding me is not an argument. And it's a particularly idiotic tactic when you just got done saying that you believe God formed man from dirt. You can't say, God made man out of dirt with a straight face, and then in the next breath say, lightning caused life to form? That's preposterous! Especially since the whole lightning thing is actually proven conclusively to be true. This goes back to the Miller-Urey experiment where simple chemicals that were present and abundant in the early days of the Earth, including water, methane, ammonia, and hydrogen, were introduced to an electrical charge to simulate lightning. And the reaction that occurred produced simple amino acids. Particularly, the amino acids that form into proteins that make up the genetic code present in all life. The Miller-Urey experiment does not prove conclusively that that is where life originated, but it does prove conclusively that the fundamental building blocks necessary for life can and do form naturally. Which is something theistic proponents of the idea that life can only come from other life have consistently said isn't possible. And the Miller-Urey experiment was not a fluke. It wasn't a one-off. It's repeatable, testable science. So sitting there with a dumb look on your face saying, Are you kidding me? Lightning makes things? But lightning can only destroy things! That's so stupid! Well, that's not the slam dunk argument that you think it is, Matt. I've also heard them say that it's ridiculous that Jesus could have risen from the dead. How could you believe that as Christians? You're crazy? Look, they think every living organism descended from dead material. Atheism teaches a bigger resurrection on a larger scale than Christianity. I believe Jesus could have died and resurrected from the dead because he is God. But they believe every living organism descended from dead material. Death! We are surrounded by it! This is one of the weirdest arguments that gets tossed around by apologists. Calling non-biological material dead. I mean... It's almost like they don't know what a word as simple as death means. Death means the action or fact of dying or being killed. The end of the life of a person or organism. The state of being dead. The permanent ending of vital processes in a cell or tissue. To put it simply, in order for something to be dead, it must have first been alive. Something that was never alive is not dead. It's just not a biological organism, so the term doesn't even apply. But what is actually going on here is an attempt to muddy the waters of what we're talking about. Because there's two very different things being discussed here that Matt is trying to conflate. 
there's a massive difference between elements and materials forming into a biological organism and pre-existing biological organisms ceasing to function, i.e. dying, and then allegedly reanimating. Those are two completely different things. What abiogenesis posits is the idea of basic chemical materials coming together to form life. Well, this actually happens all the time. Like that glass of water you drink? Is it alive? Are the hydrogen and oxygen atoms alive? No, clearly not. But you drink them and your body assimilates them and they become integral parts of the whole biological organism that is you. Quite literally, unliving material becoming part of a living organism. So the idea of non-living material becoming part of a living organism is so basic as to be utterly mundane. It's just a question of how did it start? But then on the other hand, the idea of a biological organism in the form of a human ceasing to function, i.e. dying, and then reanimating long past the point where such reanimation is possible, is not only unusual, it's impossible according to what we know about how humans function. So trying to compare these two things is silly to begin with, but to then try and make the claim that the mundane one that happens literally every time you eat, drink, or breathe is actually silly, while the one that has never been proven to have occurred, or is even possible, is the more believable of the two? Well, that line of argumentation is... STUPID! YOU'RE SO STUPID! That unconsciousness produced consciousness, that non-life brought life into existence. That would be... No consciousness produced consciousness. Not unconsciousness. Unconsciousness would be a state of being in which an organism, particularly a human, is unaware or unable to react to their surroundings or maintain an awareness of themselves. You're unconscious when you're asleep, but you're still alive. I mean, I know this could be chalked up to a minor slip of the tongue on Matt's part, but everything he says is so demonstrably wrong and idiotic to the extreme that I can't give him the benefit of the doubt. I doubt he even knows the difference between unconsciousness and no consciousness. But anyway, consciousness is a process that's carried out by the brain. It's an emergent property of our cognitive complexity. There are plenty of other animals that have brain makeup similar enough to ours that would classify them as experiencing consciousness. Things like other apes, elephants, dolphins, and killer whales. Then there are animals with more simplistic brain makeups who we would consider experiencing a lower form of what we call consciousness, like many domesticated animals. Widening out our perspective, practically all living things with a brain can be placed on a sliding scale of cognition and consciousness, like birds, down to fish, down to cephalopods, down to insects. As the neurochemistry of the organism gets more simplistic, the organism experiences what we would classify as a lower form of consciousness. This, along with proven evolutionary biology, showcases how we've developed our level of consciousness throughout our evolutionary progression. But, of course, Matt doesn't believe in evolution at all putting him at odds with not only proven, established science, but also the vast majority of his fellow Christians on the matter. It gets more and more and more wild. My friend, do not be tricked into thinking that atheism is even a plausible explanation. I would just like to take this moment to point out that nothing you've been saying throughout this line of argumentation has anything to do with atheism. Atheism does not insist upon abiogenesis. Atheism does not insist upon evolution. Atheism does not insist upon natural selection. Atheism does not insist upon the validity of the Miller-Urey experiment. Atheism does not even insist upon naturalism. Atheism is one answer to one question. Do you believe in the existence of any gods? No. Nothing else is required of an atheistic stance. An atheist can believe in any number of things. An atheist could believe in magic. That life began because of a magic spell. 
An atheist could believe that man magically arose from dirt, just as you believe, just so long as they don't think a god was responsible for it. They're still an atheist. An atheist could believe that we're all a simulation in a super-advanced computer system. An atheist could believe we're nothing but characters in a dream of a giant turtle floating through space. An atheist could believe we're the product of universe-belching unicorns from the 8th dimension. So long as they don't believe a god is behind any of it, it's still an atheistic position. So, no, it's not atheism that insists on any of these things that you've been talking about throughout this video. But there is an organized system of thought that you are arguing against. Yes, science, bitch! So far in this video, you've taken shots at everything from evolutionary biology, to geology, to neurology, to chemistry, and you've been calling all of it atheism. Now, while I would say that most atheists accept the established scientific findings of these various fields, one need not be an atheist to do so. As again, the vast majority of your own theistic brethren also accept these things too. Christianity is the only plausible explanation, and anybody who tells you that spontaneous generation, or biogenesis as they like to call it, is a possibility, they're lying to your face. Yet another little example of him not knowing the very basics of what he's talking about. For one, it's abiogenesis, not biogenesis. Biogenesis is what theists like Matt believe in. Proof number three. Life demands a supernatural life giver. You see, in the material world, we have come to understand that there is a law of biology called the law of biogenesis. Law of biogenesis simply says this, that in this material, natural world, life comes from previously existing life of its own kind. Abiogenesis is the idea of life arising from non-life. But also, abiogenesis is not the same thing as spontaneous generation. Spontaneous generation is a scientifically debunked and now defunct hypothesis that stated that life forms could arise from inanimate, utterly inert matter. This can be exemplified in the long bygone belief that maggots arose spontaneously on dead flesh. This idea was conclusively debunked as early as the mid-1600s by Italian biologists Francisco Reddy and Lazzaro Spallanzani when they put two pieces of meat in two different flasks, one sealed and one left open. The open one developed maggots and the sealed one did not, showing that it was in fact flies that were landing on the meat and laying their eggs in it that caused maggots to develop. When they couldn't get at the meat because it was in a sealed container, no maggots. Now, this is trivial and obvious to us today, and spontaneous generation has been roundly rejected. Such is not the case for the idea of abiogenesis, because it does not posit that life arises from inert, inanimate matter. It posits that simple chemicals and elements, under the proper conditions, can join with other chemicals and elements to form more complex molecules eventually gaining in complexity until it can be considered a very simple organism. And then evolution takes effect, and over time, simple organisms become more complex, yada yada yada, we get the diversification of life on this planet. So yada yada over the best part. A very complex and intricate series of scientific processes to be sure, much too complex to fully explain here and now, but yeah, in short, not even close to the same thing as spontaneous generation. Further proof that, Matt? You don't know what you're talking about, do you? Don't buy into it. Here on YouTube, many people accuse me of being a charlatan, that I'm in this for money, and that I just want to get rich. Well, that is a silly argument. I'm not going to cajole or criticize anyone for channel size or engagement numbers, but let me just say this. This kind of subscriber count and these kinds of view numbers are not even filling Matt's gas tank week to week. So no, I wouldn't call Matt a charlatan who's just grifting for money here on YouTube. 
I think he truly believes the things that he says. Just that the things that he says are really, really stupid and utterly reprehensible. And as far as homosexuality goes, you know, I, I believe the Bible puts a death penalty on it. I believe it's I believe it's disgusting. Obviously, I believe it's the government's job to, to execute criminals. And, you know, I believe that the Bible says clearly that homosexuality is a, is a criminal crime. It's a it's a it's a crime. It's one of the worst crimes ever by whatever means they execute people. And obviously, I believe in humane you know, putting to death. Whatever our government says, as far as like for a death penalty, I think should go for them. Let me tell you something, creationism and preaching the Bible, the gospel of Christ, those things will not make you rich. It's not that one cannot get rich advocating for a particular theistic belief, particularly Christianity in America today. In fact, many, many so-called mouthpieces for God Pastors, prophets, proselytizers, and pious parishioners aplenty have amassed piles of profit from preaching and prayer. Matt's just not skilled or charismatic enough to be one of them. And seems to have settled for internet notoriety for saying outrageous bullshit, either easily understandable as factually accurate or ethically repugnant. And, I mean, I guess that's something he can hang his hat on. After all, here we are talking about him. But I think in the grand scheme of things, his brand of nonsensical evangelizing does considerably more harm for the Christian faith than it does good. I can't imagine a single person who's on the fence about whether or not to believe in God listening to Matt's drivel and coming away from it a resolute and faithful Christian. Matt's kind of third-grade science illiteracy is only vaguely reinforcing to other bigots and scientific illiterates. Not that those two things are universally part and parcel, I'm speaking specifically of people who happen to be both anti-science smoothbrains as well as hateful bigots. And for everyone else not already firmly entrenched in both of those subgroups, it sends them running away from religion like they had a rocket up their ass. So, while I would generally be happy to relegate Matt and people like him to the dustbin of brain-dead apologetics, I actually think it's useful to shine a light on him and nonsensical lame brains like him from time to time as a bit of a public service announcement. You know, this is your brain. This is your brain on fundamentalist Christianity. Wait. It's not over yet. This is what your family goes through! Your friends! So, does Matt have anything else worthwhile to say in this video? The Bible tells us, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. But the Bible also says that the fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. So, that would be a big fat no. Nothing more of substance today from Mr. Powell. Well, let's see, what did we have today? We had misreading, or not reading at all, an article citation that only said that biological organisms need to consume minerals to thrive. We had gross misunderstanding of abiogenesis, of evolution, and general biology. Failed argument from incredulity to debunk the Miller-Urey experiment. Improper conflation of spontaneous generation with abiogenesis. General misunderstanding of what atheism is, general misunderstanding of what scientific principles say, and the kind of misunderstanding of grade school level science that would have him being held back from graduating to the third grade. Honestly, I would feel a little sorry for debunking him this hard, if not for the fact that he's an asshole of epic proportions. And so that is where we'll end things for today. So thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to like this video, comment, and subscribe so you'll always be notified when a new video comes out. Special shout-out to fan of the channel Jim D, who sent in this collage of the mascot of Jewel Osco, a character called JoJo. And clearly, they've hired a member of my extended family, possibly a West Coast Plink family member, but apparently he's been doing advertisements for Jewel Osco since 2018. So thanks for the images, Jim. I guess there's more of us cycloptic pink tribbles in media than I thought. If anyone has an artistic take that they'd like to share on monoocular pink fluffy creatures, they can send them to my email address listed below in the description. Also, don't forget to check me out on Twitter and Patreon if you'd like to support my work directly. 
my Teespring if you want some Plinky merchandise. All that link below in the description. Special shout out to my most recent super thankers here on YouTube, Salvi Mike. Until next time, I'm Professor Plink reminding you to keep striving for greater understanding. It's the best way to get wherever you want to go.